Welcome back. Thought I'd do a couple quick examples for you to see how we can use this knowledge of asymptotes and rational functions to solve this problem. So we'll start off with this one, um, similar to ones in your book. We've got the function All right here that's defined, and we want to go ahead and do the following things. We want to find the domain, the vertical asymptote, and the horizontal asymptote. We're going to need to use our books um, looking at page uh, 144 to remember some of those rules of asymptotes, so it's important that we have that and, and refer to that. So we'll go ahead and start here. Um, we need to look and see uh, the domain of f. The domain of f is going to be a problem only where this denominator is zero. So let's go ahead and find where this denominator is zero. If we take, we want to know where negative 4x cubed plus 5 equals zero. So if we go ahead and solve that, we're going to have x cubed equals uh, 5 fourths. Let me go ahead and simplify that. So x is going to equal the cube root of 5 fourths, whatever that is, some ugly number. Um, that's when it equals 0. We actually don't want it to equal 0, so that's our domain. The domain is anything but x cannot equal Three, uh, the cube root of 5 fourths. We got to make sure that the cube root of 5 fourths isn't in the numerator. So if we go ahead and plug that into our calculator, a simple little calculator, I'm going to take the cube root of 5 fourths cubed is 5 fourths. So that's 3 times 5 divided by 4. And that gives me 3.75 plus. Well, we're only going to be adding here. So if I were to really just kind of think about this, I know it's not going to be 0. Because now we're going to take the cube root of 5 fourths squared and multiply that by 7 and add 2. All those are going to be positive numbers. So we're only going to have positives in the numerator. It's not going to be 0. So I can go ahead and stop here. I don't really care what the numerator is at, at the cube root of 5 fourths. I just know it's going to be positive. So we have a positive over net, uh, in 0. So that's the only problem we have. And that's the domain. All right. Now let's identify the vertical asymptotes. We'll do that in a different color. Um, let's do that in uh, red here. The vertical asymptote of f. So the vertical asymptote is where this thing is 0. So the vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals the cube root of 5 fourths. So if we go ahead and look at that, that's the vertical asymptote, and that's the line we have. Now for horizontal, um, the horizontal asymptote, we have to remember what it says. Now the degrees here are the same. If you look back on page 144, under number 2, it says if n is equal to m, if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the graph of f has the line, the leading coefficients of y equals the leading coefficients divided by themselves, so the numerator divided by the bottom there. So that's the case we have here, because those are the same degree. So y equals 3 over negative 4, or we have negative 3 fourths. Okay? And we can go ahead and let's take a look at a graph really quick. So we'll go ahead and graph this. And take a look and see if we have those asymptotes. In fact, what I'll do first is I'll graph those asymptotes, and then we'll see if it actually uses those. So if we look at the asymptotes, we have x equals the cube root of 5 fourths. That's the first line. x equals the cube root of 5 fourths. I'm going to use my knowledge of cube roots and powers, and that's the one-third power because that makes it easiest to graph. So there's that number. Cube root of 5 fourths looks like it's about 1.08. And then we have our horizontal asymptote, but y equals negative 3 fourths. So I'll type y equals negative 3 fourths. There's our asymptotes. I'm going to make these fancy for us so we can see them. And I didn't like that color. So, so those are our asymptotes. We now can go ahead and graph f of x. So if we graph f of x, f of x equals the numerator of 3x cubed plus 7x squared plus 2 divided by 
negative 4x cubed plus 5. And sure enough, we have acid groups that are affected here. We, we go across that one there, and we come down close over here, and we're looking at exactly what we have on the, we identified the correct acid group. So I'll go ahead and put this in your notes. And we have got to make that graph look beautiful. Make sure you did identify those acid groups. Moving on. Now, I, I suggest pausing this video and seeing if you could try this one on your own. Exact same directions. Um, the problem's different, but we have the same directions. So go ahead and see if you can do that. Take a minute. All right, I hope you have the answers. Let's just see what you come up with now. So we'll go ahead and look at the domain. The domain is when this thing is negative. So I got to solve, or zero. So we don't want that to be zero. So I want x squared plus one to not equal zero. And x squared does not equal to negative 1. That's never going to happen in the real, so all real numbers is our domain. The domain is all real numbers because we have this x minus 1 can't be anything squared. So we have part A done. Part B. If we have part B, we can look at it one second. All right, so if we go ahead and look at this, we can see what the vertical asymptote is. It's when this is 0. Since that's never 0, there's going to be no vertical asymptote. All right, no, no vertical asymptote. Part C. We're going to look at uh, whether or not. All right, it's just like the other one. The vertical as or the horizontal asymptote is going to be the leading coefficients because we have the same degree in the numerator and the denominator. So this is going to be y equals three. And if we take a minute and graph this, we just modify our other graph. We have uh, we had x didn't have any and. The y was at 3. So we'll put a y at 3. And we'll look at the x. And then we'll go ahead and graph this. Changing f of x to f of x equals 3x squared plus 7 plus x minus 5 divided by x squared plus 1. And if we look at this, we truly do have this graph is got a horizontal asymptote. Now this is a little bit interesting. Let's take a look over here. This is something I've been meaning to point out. <clears throat> it crosses the asymptote. But if you remember the definition of an asymptote is it accepts it um, <clears throat> crosses it approaches at the endpoints. So this one does come to it and if we go ahead and find it this can find the intersection of the asymptote here, and we do have a point there, 8 comma 3, where it does go through 3. You just plug in 8, or plug in 8, and you'll get 3 out of out of this, and it works. And we said the asymptote was 3, but it approaches it at the endpoints. So something good to remember for quizzes, tests, that it does. It, the asymptotes can be crossed; they just can't be crossed at the end. At the ends is where they go and at, and look. To, cross, uh, to approach, but not to cross. So this one comes out and approaches it infinitely close. Up here it goes up, but then at some point it's curving back infinitely close, but never going to be 3 again. So good things to know. Let's go ahead and move on. We have this last one. Again, I'd take a moment, pause this, and see if you could try it. Again, the same directions, starting to be a broken record. This one does look a little different, though, because of the degrees, but go ahead and take a minute. All right, hopefully you've come up with some answers. Come up with the domain. The domain, oh jeez, Beller. The domain here is where this thing is negative. So if we have the domain here, we can look at x squared minus 4. We don't want that to equal 0. 
which means x squared can't equal 4, and x can't equal plus or minus 2. Convenient how it was a perfect square. You can just go to root of both sides. And it's got that plus or minus 2. So there's our domain. Our domain is x is not equal to negative or positive 2. And then if we go to part b, we can start to look at um, the vertical astrocyte. And part b should be very easy now because we know that the denominator is here. So our vertical asymptotes are at x equals positive 2 and negative 2 because that's where the denominator goes to 0. And then part c, we're going to look at, I'm hoping you see how quick this is starting to come, but part c, we'll look and see <coughs> that the horizontal asymptote is, now we have to look here carefully, because now the numerator is smaller than the denominator. So if we go ahead and look at our page 144, or you have memorized, if the numerator is smaller than the denominator, then you know that there are no horizontal asymptotes. Or that's our abbreviation. So we have that. We know there's none. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and just verify that what we found. Um, we can look at this. So we are going to, first of all, we'll get rid of this. Turn our, our x back on because we need two x's. So we'll make x, one of them negative 2. And we'll make this x equals positive 2 and negative 2. And then we'll change the function to be 4x plus 4 divided by x squared minus 4. And if we take a look at this, of fun stuff going on. We'll be looking more at how to graph these later, but there are three regions, and each region at its endpoints approaches these graphs. So that's pretty neat. Something I failed to not notice here is this does factor in the numerator. If you could have pulled out a 4 to get x plus 1, it didn't help us any, so that's probably why I didn't do it. But um, if we were to factor both of them, we should probably check that it doesn't um, cancel anything out. And Truly, you don't, because you have x plus 2, x minus 2. So we don't cancel anything out. <clears throat> it's good to check, make sure we don't have those. All right, let's go to the next one. So here, this one, um, we're going to look at two horizontal asymptotes. Um, we're going to follow the same direction. So here, we want to know where the, this is a different, this is actually not a rational function, just so you know, because the definition of a rational function is has a numerator and a denominator that's equal to um, polynomials, and this doesn't, so we, we don't have a graph like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the graph actually looks like. I'll pre-graph this one so we can actually just pull it in here, and it looks something like this. And we have, you see we have two horizontal asymptotes. This bottom is never going to be negative, which that would end to help us understand. We're not going to have a negative, we're not going to have a, a vertical asymptote because that can never be negative. We also can say that anything we can put in here, because there's not anything that's going to make that go to zero. But let's look at how we might rewrite this so we can understand what's happening. This function can be piecewise defined, which we talked about earlier in the year. It's actually equal to two things. We have x minus 7x over x plus 5. And we have x minus 7x over negative x plus 5. We have to limit those the domains on each part of this. This is when x is greater than 0, and this is when x is less than 0. And we can put equal on one of them because it doesn't matter. We're going to get the same thing. But that tells us if it's less than negative 0, we're going to have negative negative. It's going to be positive because that's the absolute value. If it was positive 0, we'll just keep it positive. So these are the two parts of this graph that we really can look at. And if we look at these two as now rational functions, this one's got a negative one, a negative, uh, uh, let's see, leading coefficient, seven-fifths. 
fifth five. So if we go ahead and look at these, we can see how they came up with that. So the domain we've talked about, vertical asymptotes we have to worry about, horizontal asymptotes. Now we look at each of these and define the horizontal asymptotes. This is a kind of, oh, this should have a two there. There we go. As a two there, then we have uh, leading co the, the definition for this one will be Take a look. All right, looks like the error was in this squared. Looks like I have the wrong graph here. So let's go ahead and get rid of this graph and just see what we can come up with on our own, and then we'll figure out what we've messed up with. So we can simplify both the, nu the numerators on this um, to be negative uh, 6x. So it's x minus 7x is negative 6x. And this helps us really see what these asymptotes are going to be. And I could even have simplified it up here, negative 6x. But the point is, we now have the same power, power of 1 in both the numerator and the denominator, which means we're in the m equals n case, so we're taking leading coefficients. So this horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 6 over 1, and this one is negative 6 over negative 1, so this just equals negative 6, and this equals 6. So if we go ahead and now graph this with these asymptotes in it, we can see that the correct graph does actually cross 5, but it does not ever cross 6 or negative 6. So this is the actual graph of this. And it does have two vertical or two horizontal asymptotes at negative 6 and positive 6. So we can go ahead and keep that. And now we have a, a good idea of how to do those. The last one I think we're going to do is we're going to look at how to, this applies to different ideas. So, actually, I think I'll save this for another video. See if you can try one like this on your own. Thanks.